Hi, I'm Dr. Grace Sun, a dental laser practitioner and an educator. Today, I'm very honored to have the esteemed ophthalmologist, Dr. Rolando Toyos here to talk about the laser, LED, and PBN on the ocular health. Hey, I'm Dr. Rolando Toyos from Toyos Clinic. We have clinics in uh, Nashville, Memphis, South Haven, Mississippi, and New York City. I want to thank Dr. Sun for having me come here to talk to you a little bit about light treatments, the eye, dry eye disease. So my light journey started over 25 years ago when I started using intense pulse light on my patients for rosacea. And what I was finding is that the intense pulse light was treating the skin of rosacea patients, but not only that, these patients were telling me that it was helping their dry eye. So that started a whole long line of research to see if intense pulse light could be a treatment for dry eye. And it makes sense. If you look at dry eye as not only just a treatment of the eye, where you're actually just doing something to make the tears work better, what you're trying to do in uh, dry eye disease is help the skin and the glands. So if you have a skin problem like rosacea or acne, that's gonna affect the glands that help produce your tear, and it's gonna make your tear worse. So what we wanna do is come up with treatments that actually will help the skin and glands. So when I was doing intense pulse light, not only was I noticing that patient's skin and glands were working better, but it's actually that it was making their tear uh, better and improving their own natural tear. So how does it do that? So that was kind of the long uh, education for me in terms of figuring out what we were doing with intense pulse light to actually uh, make tears better. And it turns out that certain wavelengths of light will actually stimulate the glands and the cells to work better. And we now know that that definition is photobiomodulation. So with photobiomodulation, with intense pulse light, we're using wavelengths of light anywhere from 400 nanometers all the way to 1,000 nanometers. And what we're doing is we're putting special filters to block out the wavelengths of light that we don't want to allow the wavelengths that we do want to stimulate these cells to work better. What are the wavelengths of light that we want for dry eye, the glands that make your natural tear to work better? And those wavelengths of light are actually 600 nanometers to 700 nanometers, which is red light. So it turns out with intense pulse light, using this red light actually will actually stimulate uh, the meibomian glands and stimulate the lacrimal gland to make a better tear. Now the question I always get is, do these wavelengths of light actually hurt the eye? Uh, and they do not. Actually, right now, what we're seeing is doctors are using infrared and red light to stimulate the retina for patients with age-related macular degeneration. So it might be a good thing for these uh, wavelengths of light uh, to be used in patients for their eye. What we actually tell our patients and what we tell doctors is when you're using intense pulse light, you actually do want the eyes to be closed and to be protected. Uh, the reason being is if you shoot these wavelengths of light directly onto the eye uh, with no protection, then that can actually uh, hurt the eye. So there's reports where patients have had intense pulse light and their eyes weren't closed and their eyes weren't protected that caused uh, iritis in the eye, which is an inflammation uh, in the eye. So. Through me using intense pulse light about 18 years ago, I started thinking, well, are there other light treatments that we could use to help patients with dry eye? And that got me started looking at LED lights. So I actually looked at blue light, red light, and infrared light. And I looked at it with a combination of those to see if these uh, wavelengths of light with LED could help dry eye patients. And what I found is they can. Uh, and an added advantage of blue light is that blue light actually can kill bacteria on the surface of the skin. 
So when we use a little bit of blue light here in the lid margin, we're actually killing the bad bacteria that can cause an inflammation of the lid. And what we found is the same thing with red light, that red light actually will stimulate the cells of the meibomian glands and the cells that actually produce uh, your natural tear. So we like to use a little blue light, a little red light. And when it comes to infrared light, infrared light penetrates a little bit deeper. That makes patients' uh, lids and eyes uh, feel better as well. Maybe not so much in terms of photobiomodulating the cells of the meibomian glands, but more so just to give the patient a little bit of relief to the lid because it controls erythema and uh, inflammation. We don't want to look at these lights directly. We want to, when we're using these light sources around the lid margin and around the eyes, best to keep the eyes closed so that you're not uh, staring directly at these LEDs. They're very powerful. We want to keep the eyes closed whether we're uh, doing the lower lid or the upper lid. So with the lids closed, the question is, do these lights do anything uh, to our eyes, doing any damage? And they do not. So if I have my eyes closed and I was in a dark room and I were to turn on the lights, the retina would actually observe that light being turned on. So with your eyes closed and we're using these LEDs, you do see the light and it is, um, affecting the retina because we have receptors in our retina that actually can perceive when light is on and can perceive when lights are off. So I tell patients, yes, when you're doing these LEDs around the lid margin, uh, your eye is gonna perceive light, but it's not gonna do anything to actually uh, hurt your eye or hurt uh, the retina. Because these wavelengths of light do not penetrate deeper than the dermis. So they don't go past the dermis into the eyes. So that's why if your eyes are closed, you will perceive light, but it's not going to hurt your retina. And as I was saying before, we're actually now using these lights to help patients with age-related uh, macular degeneration. So I hope I've kind of cleared up some of these questions that you have uh, about light and how it can affect the eye. And what we know is if used correctly, uh, you can actually help your eye uh, with these wavelengths of light. So I want to thank again Dr. Sun for giving me a chance to uh, talk to you about these things.